Hey, I'm Christopher Sasha. I'm a functional health strategist, an author, and a host for a radio talk show that's all about dealing with achieving optimal health. And the biggest question I get from my listeners and just people in general is, why do I keep regaining all the lost weight after my diets? I mean, how many diets have you been on only to regain all your lost weight plus some in a short period of time? Well, there's a reason. And the reason is that, well, your body's a hell of a lot smarter than you are. And if you think about it, our bodies have evolved and been evolving for millions of years. And during this time, our bodies have produced hormones like leptin and neuropeptide Y. They have kept us alive during times of famine. Our bodies also have developed uh, defense mechanisms and feedback systems. And we're trying to fight all of this with determination and willpower, which are just two temporary faculties in the first place that fail us in the end. So our bodies have a set point. It's called a body fat set point. It's a mechanism that keeps us at the same weight. So if you've weighed the same amount of weight for an extended period of time for like a year, year and a half, that's where your body fat set point is set. So let's say that you've weighed 175 pounds for the past year and a half. So your body fat set point is set at 175 pounds. So if you overeat every once in a while, you'll come back down to 175 pounds. And also, if you go on a starvation diet because you're trying to look good on the beach for the summer, after you go off the diet and you start eating again, you go back up to 175 pounds. That's how our bodies are designed with this particular mechanism. It's designed to stay at equilibrium because our bodies are a homeostatus machine. So it's um, sort of like, think of your thermostat in your house. Say that you set the thermostat at 73 degrees. Well, here in the north where I'm at, in the wintertime, it gets pretty cold, so the room temperature goes down. And what happens is that once it goes below 73 degrees, the heater kicks in to bring it back up to 73 degrees. And vice versa, in the summertime, the heat in the room goes up, so the air conditioner kicks in and brings it back down to 73 degrees. So the entire time, the thermostat's job is to keep it at homeostatus and balance at 73 degrees by either kicking in the heater or the air conditioner to keep it back at 73 degrees. And that's how our body fat set point works, to keep us at a certain weight. But the question is that if our bodies are, have a set point at a predetermined set, why do we keep gaining weight as we get older? Well, let's take a look at the stock market as an analogy on this because it's a perfect example. The stock market, the Dow Jones, Dow Jones Industrial Average, is um, it's an organization where its model is based off uh, equilibrium point. So. It, the uh, stock market wants to stay at supply equals demand at all times. And during the day, individuals, uh, corporations, uh, even governments are buying and selling stocks all day long. They're buying and selling stocks, they're uh, buying and selling puts, calls, futures. And this is what makes the market go up and down. So if you look at the day, and this is actual data that I took from uh, from the DowJones.com in, in 2015. So this particular day is in uh, January 15th of 2015. And you can see that it's going up and down, up and down. People are buying and selling stocks all day long. But if you look at the end of the day, it's pretty much the same thing as the beginning of the day. It might be a few points above or a few points below, but at the end of the day, it's pretty much the same. And that's how our body weight works also. So if you go off a 24 hour uh, cycle, so uh, what you weighed yesterday morning is what you'll weigh today's morning. So if you weighed 175 pounds yesterday morning, your body weight goes up and down according to internal and external factors like um, how much food you eat, how much water you drink, the amount of times that you're in between meals, uh, stress horm hormones, appetite hormones, sex hormones, all these factors go into play as to your weight going up and down all day long. But at the end of the day, at the end of the 24 hour cycle, you'll be at the same weight as you were 24 hours before. You might be up a few grams or down a few grams, but you'll be pretty much the same weight. You'll be in balance. But if you look at it one year, you take all of this going into a one year time frame, and this is actually data from the Dow Jones in 2015. And again, it's going up and down. People, are corporations, and uh, corporations are, or governments are buying and selling stocks and futures and calls and puts. Uh, all day long throughout the year and 
it's going up and down, up and down, but at the end of the year, from January to January, you can see that it's slightly increased, which is pretty much the same thing as uh, as our body weight throughout the year. We're going up and down, up and down, but we go up a little bit at the end of the year. And the reason behind that is because the typical American gains about one and a half pounds per year after the age 35, which I'll talk about in a second. But this actually gives you a really good sample of uh, how it parallels our body weight in here, especially here in the north where I'm at, because throughout the year you're going up and down, up and down. And then what happens in June? The stock market collapses uh, because of the internal and external factors like consumer price index, interest rates, um, war, terrorism. All these factors go into play as to as people and organizations are buying and selling stocks. But what happens in June is it plummets. And what happens in June in the north with people with their body weight? They're ready for the beach season, so they're starving themselves. They're going on these fad diets to lose 30 pounds in 30 days so they can look good on the beach. So we plummet down in weight. Now what happens in September with the stock market? It climbs back up again because, again, internal and external factors that work in, a fa in the United States' favor where the dollar is strong, so people start buying and uh, more stocks in America and our corporations. So what happens in September? September, well, the end of summer is, so you don't have to look good for the beach anymore because beach season is over. So now you can put all your clothes back on and start gaining all the weight again. So we start going up and up. We've got the holidays over here also. So we have uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and you're eating because that's what the holidays are for, right? It's a time of celebration where you can eat and drink and have fun with your friends. And we're gaining and gaining all this weight. In fact, in Thanksgiving Day, did you know that the typical American eats over 3,000 calories just on Thanksgiving dinner? It's crazy. It's like well, that's two times as much what the normal person eats in the first place. So we're going up and up. And then at the end of December, beginning of January, in the stock market of 2015 leading into 2016, what happened? The collapse of the Chinese economy happened, which is a huge factor in, um, globally. It just made huge effects on the markets everywhere in the world because of that. Also, North Korea, with their uh, nuclear testing and everything, also affected into this. The United States uh, Fed increased interest rates and some other things. So the um, stock market crashed, and it go, it's going down and down and down right now. At, to, including today because of all the uh, crises that are going on with terrorism and economies in the world and crazy dictatorships that want to go to war. But what happens in our lives also? The holidays are over. We've gained all this weight. And now it's New Year's resolution. It's time to take all the weight off again. So I thought it was kind of interesting that the uh, 2015 stock market parallels our body weight. Um, so again, it goes up just slightly from its 2000, uh, January 2015 to January 2016. And again, our body weight goes up at the, at the age of 35, about one and a half pounds. But if you look at the 15-year uh, stock market, you'll see that historically the stock market continues to climb. It's not linear, but it continues to climb and climb. It goes up and down, up and down. And it's the same thing as our body weight. Because at the age of 35, that's when it really kicks in. Hormones start changing in both men and women. So the women, what happens is that they have estrogen and progesterone. Their levels start to plummet. But what happens is that progesterone plummets lower than estrogen. So now there's an imbalance. There's more estrogen than progesterone. So now women are estrogen dominant, which means that estrogen produces fat and fat produces more estrogen. So it's like a vicious cycle. More and more estrogen, more and more fat. You can continue to get fatter and fatter and continue to gain more and more weight. Now men go through a uh, menopause also, it's called andropause. And what happens with men is we lose our testosterone. Our testosterone starts to decline rapidly. Testosterone, its job is to build muscle and keep muscle. So if you lose the testosterone, you start losing muscle tissue. When you lose muscle tissue, it slows down the metabolism and more calories get stored as body fat. So you continue to get fatter and fatter as you get older. So the point here is with the set point, with the body fat set point, is that the body fat set point can readjust to higher levels to keep you at that weight. You didn't always weigh 175 pounds. You weighed uh, from the beginning of birth all the way up to 175 pounds in that example. Uh, you weighed a uh, certain amount, 
throughout that time. But you continue to gain weight and continue to raise the body fat set point so that your body weight will stay at the same point no matter what you do, if you overeat or undereat occasionally, it'll go back to the set point. But what happens is that we don't overeat or undereat occasionally. We overeat constantly, little by little, and little by little, we continue to gain more and more weight. We continue to increase the body fat set point and readjusting that to higher levels so it makes it harder and harder to lose weight. So if the body fat set point can set at higher increments to keep you at a higher weight, it can also lower to lower levels to keep you at a lower weight. So if you, if you gain the weight slowly over time, 15 years, you gain approximately 23 pounds. So you can lose 23 pounds in about 23 weeks. So I recommend about one pound per week. That way your body readjusts and it doesn't say, hey, wait a minute, starvation mode, start storing everything. So if you take it down slowly, you can readjust your body fat set point. When you readjust your body fat set point, then you can occasionally overeat or undereat and your body weight will go back to that same point. Expect plateaus though, along the way because your body, body fat set point takes a little while for it to kick in and say, hey, wait a minute, I was up here, now I need to be down here. So it slowly comes back down. That's during that plateau. And sometimes it could take a month or so before you get out of that plateau. But during that time, keep persisting and just losing one pound per week. That's it. Don't overstarve yourself. Don't cut out a thousand calories. Don't cut out breakfast, meals, macronutrients. Just keep slowly taking off the pounds one pound at a time and you'll get out of that plateau and you'll start decreasing again. This way will continue to lower your body fat set point so that if you do overeat sometimes, it'll go back down to the lower point and you won't have to diet again, you'll keep the weight off permanently by readjusting the body fat set point at a lower level by taking it down slowly. Okay, if you like this information that, uh, that I gave, I'm Christopher Sasha, you can reach me at ChristopherSasha.com, uh, FitBodySpotSasha.com. If you liked what you had to see, if you like what you heard over here, uh, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment. If you didn't like it, if you think that none of this makes sense, you give me a thumbs down, give me a comment why, just Give me something, but uh, I hope you learned something here, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.